Welcome back to Anarchy in the Ukulele. Paolo. Hello. You're Hello. back. I'm back. I'm back. I've said this every video we've filmed yeah. in this little yeah. set of videos, I just know. in case this one goes out first. <laughs> we've got two Epiphones. Good looking ukes. They are good looking ukes, aren't they? I mean, mm. I think they divide opinion quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, that one's very, well, they're both very guitar looking. Yeah. I mean, this one is, it's a miniature hummingbird, isn't it? And yes. It's, I really like it, and I wouldn't normally like... I don't even like the actual Hummingbird guitars that much. No, they're not my thing. They're a bit, no. a bit country and western I like me. I like the original Gibson Hummingbird, but the Epiphone ones, I think, look a bit cheap. But I love this. Yeah. Um, it's a nice nice sort of well-made thing, isn't it? Yeah. So we thought we'd do, we'd do a bit of a review on these. Um, maybe do it slightly different to normal. So we'll go through all the specs of them. Yeah. Um, and then you might notice we have a couple of amps down here that we're going to try them through yeah yeah and see see what we get out of them yeah um do you want to start with yours yeah sure so this is based obviously on the les paul um it, it's a nice looking thing it's um cherry sunburst um it's pretty weighty actually so this it's got a piezo um pickup there um it's got Oddly, no volume controls or any, no no controls yeah. on it for volume tone, no built-in tuner well, or, or anything. It's completely passive, isn't it? Which yeah. they, they both are. This is the same. This has got one, and it's a passive, which I really like. Yeah, because your battery always goes flat. Yeah, um, and it always goes flat in an opportune moment. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we'll try them later, but the signal out of these seems plenty strong enough to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, certainly going into an amp. I guess going into a PA system, you'd want to maybe go through a DI box to boost your signal a little bit. But yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, go on. Carol. That's okay. So this has got a solid mahogany neck, and it's got a maple top. It, it's got a bolt-on neck, so it's very guitar-like in yeah. that. And that does mean it's got a, a real weight to it at this end. Okay, so this, I mean, this is, I would say, heavier than a normal ute, presumably because of the pickup. But then where we've got the bolt on, it's a bolt on one piece neck. Um, that does give it a certain sort of weight to this end. Yeah, can I have, can I have a little look at it for a sec? Yeah, I'll just sure. swap for a second. I'm just because it's a hollow body. Yeah, and it's can't, a thin line have body, a look isn't a, it? And a big, I don't know if we can get that in the camera, if we can get in the sound hole at I'm sorry, I won't move. Or do I need to move that way? So you can just see in the sound hole that there's a big block of wood. Right, so from there upwards, there's a big block of wood. And I don't know whether that's... The cover in a truss rod or something? Well, no, it's it's so that you've got the bolt on neck. Ah, uh, okay. Because this one's got a truss rod, I think. Yes. So the neck's going into there and then there's this big block of wood in there for it to for these they've got to screw into something yeah so they screw yeah, into yeah. the big block of wood that's in there yeah um but the rest of it is hollow isn't it, it yes yeah. there's no real resonance on it no no so it's, and I it's, think, so it's I think fine it's, for acoustic playing i think it's very thick so yeah it's a bit of a strange design because you've got the weight of a solid body yeah um it's very slim line yeah, very. it's got a very small sound hole. Yeah, and the thickness of the top and everything to me seems quite thick. I mean, you can see the thickness of yeah of the back. It's it's not thin at all. Um, so it almost doesn't quite know what it is, does it? Yeah, yeah. It's like it wants to be a Les Paul, but they want you to play yeah. it acoustically as well. Um, it's got nineteen frets. Uh, comes with a gig bag. Uh, it's got the open back tuners and this one is 119 pounds you plug in it's got a separate plug there some of them you plug in here so it's more like an electric one that you plug in there um it's got a scratch plate to make it obviously look like the les paul um and it's got a mahogany i think it's mahogany um bridge here it's a really nice looking thing and it strikes me as being well made you know, it, it does look like the finish, the sunburst finish is nice. Mm, very shiny, um, nice bit of, you know, white binding, and sometimes you get a little bit of run on the binding, yeah. but none of the that The binding's got that kind of creaminess to it as well, yeah. which just makes it not look like it's sort of plasticky in a toy. Yeah, you know, um, that's a nice looking thing, that the the head's nice, all the frets yeah, are frets really, are nice. really smooth, there's no paint runs or anything, you know, the Les Paul signature is, is absolutely gorgeous. Um, these, you know, very 
evenly spaced, you know, sometimes yeah. you get them really wobbly. Everything about that says to me that's well built. So it's a nice looking ukulele. This yeah. one, I mean, it's similar, similarly made. So you've got the cherry um, burst, sunburst. It is mahogany laminate front, back and sides, mahogany neck. You know, it's it's come from the same place, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Yours has got the red finished neck. Yeah. This has just the wood to match the wood on the back. Well, yeah. yours is red finished all over, isn't it? Yeah. Which is nice. I mean, the grain yeah, that's beautiful, there isn't is it? lovely, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, one piece as well. Um, so this is based on the on the Hummingbird. That's based on the Les Paul. Um, Hummingbird, if you don't know, is a very... It was originally a Gibson right. guitar. Um Epiphone and Gibson were very closely related. They were the same company at one point. They split up. I think they might be the same again now. I, I get yeah. confused. Um, so that's where... And the Hummingbird is really in relation to the pit guard, which has a picture of Hummingbird on it. And that one's 137. 137. So how much was yours? Mine's 119. 119. Yeah. Um, and again, it's the same kind of thing. There's, this hasn't got a bolt-on neck. So it's got a dovetail neck. Dovetail oh, neck. Um a nice neck. The join at the top's really good. Mm. A bit of an obvious join there, but uh, that never really bothers me anyway. No, it doesn't, mate. Um, again, it's... There's not a lot of resonance in there. No. When me. I always find on these videos, when I tap, and then I listen back on the microphones, because we've kind of upped the levels of the microphones, they sound more resonant than they do in real life. Right, but yeah. That, that to me, is pretty dead. Yeah. I mean, yeah. listen to that. Yeah. If, and I've done this before. I sometimes when they're so glossy, you get that yeah. as well a little bit. But if you, I mean, this isn't glossy, so it's not a great, oh, I don't know. Let me get a gloss one. Now, now that Paul said that, let me yeah. get a gloss one, right. And okay, this is a different, oh, there's leads everywhere. This is a different instrument that's a lot more expensive. But. Yeah. The yeah, that's is, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's like a drum. Yeah. It's always like there's that too many is... layers on there or something. I don't know, but... Um, I mean, I think yeah. it's, it's to do with the thickness. So that seems a lot thinner. Yeah. Thinner. So again, you've got a passive pickup, haven't you? Because you've got no controls at all, no yeah. volume or tone or anything, but that's fine. Passive pickup, same um, sort of type of mahogany bridge. This is just styled for the Hummingbird. Yeah. Um, again, you've got the Hummingbird bit up there, you've got the nice Epiphone logo. Nice headstock. Is my headstock bigger than yours? Is it exactly the same? Marginally bigger, I think. Yeah, you've, you've got the closed um, tuning pegs, haven't you? Have nope. You? Got, you got same, open ones. Same tuning pegs, yeah. open geared. Yours aren't 100% even the way they've been screwed in, if you look at them. No, they're not. No. Actually, which is slightly annoying, but it's still a... Slightly wonky. Made in China. Yeah. Inspected. I quite like these um, double fret markers, they're quite cool, aren't they? Double fret markers are cool, again, styled after the original. There's a few kind of bits of dust and things on here that um, it's just not been cleaned off properly. So I think, all in all, we, we put these, or we put one of these on our live stream and said, was it style over substance? Because mm. I think the styling of them is actually really, really nice. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that's a cool looking thing. I mean, I know some people aren't keen on ukes that purposely look like guitars, yeah. but I think it's a cool looking thing. I think I think this one is great, and there's something about it that I really like. Mm. I think that one, they should have made it as a solid body. Yeah. A bit like Flight have done with, um, I yeah. can't remember what it's called no, now, I can't but remember they've got the series, a but... Strat copy, and yeah. they've got kind of a Gibson, almost PRS looking guitar. Yeah. Um, one, And they're solid, and they've gone after that market and they've put steel strings on them. Yeah. And I feel like that's what Epiphone should have done with this. But then you could argue, you know, it, it does two jobs at once because I can play this acoustically, um, you know, and I can plug it in. Well, you say that. <laughs> say that, yeah. You say that. So, okay, right. Let's have a little play of them. Okay. So we've got a few issues. Mm. So how long have we been trying to get this in tune? Um, two days. Two days, <laughs> yeah. We started roughly on Thursday. Um, the problem is you, you get it in tune, the tuner says it's in tune, and then where the... Two notes should be the same. So I've literally tuned this before, yeah. and these two notes should be the same, and they never are. But you could do it. Give, give it a tune now, so that we're a tune we're now. It. So it's effectively got. I wouldn't say terrible intonation, but bad enough intonation. So this, I'm using a snark, which are generally pretty good. That is saying that's saying that's a tiny little bit flat. That is saying that is perfectly in tune. Yeah. And we checked it on your expensive tuner sound quite right to me and when I check these two they're just not like 
the, no, that's not so, that, but that's, yeah, that's yeah. clashing. So, you know, yeah. I can fiddle with that, but then you, you just end up going around in circles. Um, well, there's not, there's not that much you can fiddle with, is there? You can look at the saddle. Yeah. Um, the thing is, though, if, if you play the open tunings now, it's still it's still wandering a little bit. We've had this ukulele a while. It's been played, you know, we, we tried using it. In, yeah. Did we use it in the end of the band stuff last night? We did a little yeah, bit, didn't we? Yeah, I, I used it, and yeah. I was a little bit wary of it. I mean, if I... I'll just play something, but... So as soon as I go up to it's a D, terrible. I mean, when I actually, so I had it perfectly in tune, I went up to an E, and it was saying it was an F. Yeah. Um, so what's what's the action like on that? Is it high? Is it? I would say the action is high. I mean, the, your action there is over three mil. So I would, yeah. would you agree that is too high? Yeah. I mean, I, I can see all of your gorgeous face through you now. Wow. <laughs> um, but I mean, it is, it's low there, but. It's, it's, it's low, low there, the threat, so, isn't it? And it? But it's going out on the first threat, really. Yeah, which is odd because. Obviously, if they're high here, as you press that string, you're in effect bending it. Yeah. So, you know, it's no different to going and yeah. bending it like that. So I could understand it up and here. And I think this is, this is the issue that we have with some of these ukuleles, is that, so this came from a music shop. Yeah. It didn't come from a, a big box shipping retailer. It came from a genuine, decent, yep. high street music shop. Yeah. And... It, it needs work doing on it. Yeah. So I think you could get that to play in tune. Yeah, it I'm might joking. be that, you know, it needs new strings. It might, I, certainly I think the action needs to be lowered. Yeah. So you could do that. But for £120, yeah. going into a music shop, if you don't know what you're doing with regards yeah. to lowering the action, which we will show you in another video mm. um, soon, actually. We're going to get James to do some maintenance bits and bobs. Um. This is what you. This is what you're given from that music shop. Yeah, and you might not realise about the tuning or mm. things like that until you kind of get it home and you're playing it. And yeah, so I mean, yeah, you've got to buy it. You've got to take it back to the music shop. You shouldn't have to do that. Well, I think at the end of the day, if it's twenty quid, it should still be in tune. Yeah, it's got to it be should. playable. Of and, it you know, this is virtually playable. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not there's quite. There's times when it sounds okay. There's yeah. times when it sounds it sounds awful. Yeah. Um, this one is actually much better. Mm, yeah. Um, I don't think there's there's tuning problems on this one at all. So that's quite a nice sound, isn't it? That's the one quite, I'm for. quite bright. Not. I mean, it doesn't to me sound like a, a hummingbird. I would expect it, but that's no, because it's but nylon it's, strings. It's not going to sound like a, a hummingbird. Mm. Um, but yeah, so there's no tuning problems on this. The action is considerably lower, I think. It's not considerably actually. It's still it's still fairly high. You can see how far the saddle's stick. Yeah, up. this one you can, I'm looking at that thinking, well, that is pretty high. Yeah. Um, this isn't quite as high as that one. Mm. So there's no real problems with this one, tuning wise. Yeah. Um, the issue with this one is as an acoustic ukulele, it's quite dead. There's not much tone to yeah. it. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really ring out that much. The, the main body of the note dies off really quickly and then you, you get this overtone that kind of lasts yeah. from there, which is quite nice, but that main body of the note dies off really quickly. There's not much tone to it. It's a little bit sort of tinny in tone on um, this, this G string there and then yeah. it gets a bit thicker in the middle because they're quite sort of chunky sound in the middle. Yeah. And it's, so it's a bit weird because you get this top end coming from this mm. and then this thick sort of sound. I always think when ukuleles are quite thick wood and they're glossed, you almost get this thick sound to them that's quite dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say the lack of resonance in this. Mm. I mean, that's, it's like banging a bit of wood. It's Swap over. For me, this is a uke built for strumming. But that, that's... Yeah. It's a little bit. I've put some elastic bands over my lunchbox. Yeah, there's there's nothing in there that makes you go, "Oh, this is lovely to play." But I do like it to look at. 
I mean, you can't get any vibrato. No. It feels thick, it feels quite taut, it, it, it's, mm. yeah. you know, and yes, you could change the strings, but again, for this kind of price and the people that are gonna buy these, you shouldn't really have to do that. Yep. However, however, we have the amps here. Yes, yeah, so this is the, where the, the second sort of bow to their string comes well, off, to their bow. <laughs> we've done this video because we used these through amps last night. Yeah. Um, you grab that. And I, when I walked into you sorting the recording out earlier, I was like, what is that? Yeah. Well, let's, I tell you what, we're going to play a bit of, just a snippet of that recording. Okay. And we're going to play it now. Roll VT Bongo Boy. the chain yeah and i mean the lead uke on that sounded immense i was to me. i was amazing oh, was no, it I was a you <laughs> um, but um yeah that's a video that's going to come out soon yeah. it might have already come out who that's knows brilliant. But, yeah brilliant. But we had loads was. of fun doing that didn't we and we used this and we used that yeah. so i was mainly doing the picking bit and the hard wind bit distorted <laughs> don't, don't play, play and talk oh. yeah that's hard do you want to start again We've had a closer look at this, and the tuners are pretty slack. Yeah. And effectively, by the time I'd got the E in tune, that was so sort of loose that it was um, slipping, maybe. slipping. So they need tightening, um, which again isn't ideal, but maybe no. that would, would sort it out. But um, oddly, again, a beginner is not going to necessarily know that, so they've got to take yeah. it back to the shop or take it to someone to have a look at. Yeah, yeah. And we, we can only go on the one yeah. that we buy. We don't get given these, we buy these. Yeah. Um, and Oddly now though, now I have had a little fiddle with it and we've plugged it in, it sounds <laughs> less out well, of tune. you think it sounds better? I think so it sounds better. We've got, we've got a couple of amps here humming away in the background. Um, I've got mine going through the clean acoustic amp because this is more of an acoustic, even though on the chain actually I was playing this through that amp with loads of distortion and I loved it. It yeah. was so, so much fun. You're going into there and we're going to put a bit of distortion on you in a bit. Yeah. So, right, going through the amp, so this is the clean one. We've got reverb on there to try and kind of, you know, make it sound nice. All of a sudden, this becomes more playable to mm. me. Um, and I don't know why that is, <laughs> No, really. I think it's just the fun of having it connected to an amplifier. Yeah, sounds nice. The pickup's nice, and the fact that it's um, not an active, it's a passive pickup. All right, I'm just going to play a little bit more. Vibrato on it, no. But um, you've got that sort of. It's got a bit, bit more depth to it. It, it just makes it more fun. Mm. Um, to get even more fun is playing that through that amplifier, isn't it? Yeah, that's so, when it sounded awesome. Right, give us a play with it clean at the minute. So this is clean, and, and we oddly think it's a bit more in tune, don't pull, we? Pull. But let's have a listen to some chords. No. That's you know it's a it's a bit dead, isn't no, it? It's, it's, it's hard. We, we're trying to make the best of this ukulele, and it's it's really hard because um, it's not very good. What I want you to do is I want you to swap to this one. Yeah, which is the one that I played last night with distortion on. So I'm going to pop a little bit of distortion on for you. Lovely. Hold on, hold on. 
So I've popped a bit of distortion on for you. Um, this is where I think if this one was in tune, I think this is where these kind of excel. Yeah. Is going through amps. That one's nice through the through the clean amp. Yeah. You know, it makes a big difference to using that as an instrument. So if you want to be amped up, I think that's quite a good ukulele for that price point with a decent enough pickup in there to do that with. Yeah. This is where we had great from it. Paul, take it away. Paul. sound isn't it okay right we're gonna have to take it off him now so right we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna turn the amp off because paul will not be able to not play yeah and uh let's turn that off sounds nice doesn't it it's got a, it's got a good sustain it's it was just all of a sudden last night when we were doing the band stuff i was like oh i, I kind of get this instrument even though that's not the design of that that's designed to be an acoustic copy yeah um but i just kind of felt like oh this instrument has a bit of a purpose when you do that to it because of the pickup in there. This, if this played better, I prefer the size of that because I prefer the tenor. I find for doing lead stuff, I, this would have been too fiddly for yeah. me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that we're necessarily talking anybody into buying either of these ukuleles. Mm. I think that one is, is the winner out of these two for us at the minute. Yeah. And I don't see this one replicating that because the acoustic tone of this one isn't very good. Yeah. Even if it was in tune because... It doesn't know what it is. It's too thick. Yeah. It's got the big block of wood in the top. It's, you know, I don't think this one works particularly well. I think if they made it into a complete solid body with an actual electric, not electric guitar pickup, but an adaptation for a ukulele pickup like the Flights have got. Yeah. The styling and the, the quality of it, this this would be an absolute winner. And they could probably sell it for about 300 quid, 350 Well, pounds. they don't take that step. Yeah. It's like they won't move away from yeah. it. But, I mean, I, I couldn't... No, I'd like to play one that stays in tune or that I can even get in tune and then do, yeah. you know. But I think if you want an acoustic ukulele and the look of it being like a guitar doesn't offend you, which it does to some people, sometimes it does to me. There's just something about that one that I keep saying to people I like. Mm. Don't know why, you, you know, can't put my finger on it, but I really like that one. Yeah. Um, but if it doesn't offend you... That's a pretty good ukulele for, what is it, £137? It's not pounds expensive, is it? It's clearly you could, well made. But you could play that acoustically, but if you want to experiment with pedals, loop pedals and yeah. stuff like that, you're not going to have the thing of a battery that's gone flat, you're not going to have any of those issues, yeah. and you can go straight in with something like that and mess around with amplifiers and pedals and stuff like that. And I think that's, that's where that one is a bit of a winner for that price. Yeah, and I think also because it's nice when it's not distorted, yeah. if you're sat at home and you want to record it, you want to plug it into your computer, it's easy done. You haven't got to worry yeah. about micing it up. You know, you can get these little things exactly. that you plug straight into a USB. Exactly, and then so you're making a, a dead-ish acoustic sound just sound more interesting with reverb yeah. and EQ and things like that. Um, just to quantify that, because you could buy a, a Carla ukulele with a pickup in. Mm. For the, same, for the same price. And it was, it was 140 And they, they're good as well. The reason I like that is the passive pickup in it. Yeah, so the Carla, you put a battery in it, yeah. i.e. it's non-passive. Um, and then you do, I do like the little tuners that you get, and I do like the fact yeah. that you can alter the volume I don't, and that. I don't ever find the tuners to be accurate. No, they're not in the pickups. Great. So I always end up using a clip-on tuner anyway, so the tuner's yeah. out for me. The EQ, again, I find them limiting because you've got a treble and a bass. So you, normally only treble, actually. Possibly, possibly only treble, and in which case all you can do is make it sound tinny. But I, I like the volume. In if you're doing yeah. a gig, it's really handy to be able to it turn it handy. off. And that's one of the problems we had with this yesterday is that you can't. You'd almost want to run it through a tuner pedal so that you can mute it. Yeah, yeah, easily. exactly. Um, but I just the swing about it that I really liked. I like that the passive pickup. I like love it when it was plugged into there and played it. And you know, I was playing some solo stuff, which I'm not particularly great at, but it made me sound really good. And I was like, oh, oh don't understand how No, but it was it was yeah, it, it was really, really fun to play. It was bluesy. Yeah. And it got the sound that we were after for that track. 
So I didn't enjoy, you in all didn't honesty, enjoy playing that because I was thinking... I'm not even Argh. enjoying holding this one. <laughs> no, but it's funny, isn't it, too? You yeah. know, made by the same people and this one, I don't think we love it, but we yeah. like it. Yeah. And, you know, if a student of mine turned up with this, I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. If they turned up with that, I'd be a bit... Yeah. I would say if you go into a music store to buy one of these, though, either know what you're doing yourself with checking yep. the intonation and things like that and then talk to the guys in the because there'll be guitar technicians in there that will be able to have a look at it yeah it could be an easy but sort I'll be honest because it's a ukulele if, if it's not a specialist ukulele store and I'm not sure I've seen a specialist ukulele store stocking these probably because of these issues yeah I don't know possibly um but because it's not, they've probably just taken them out of the box and they've put them on the shelf. And yeah. I know that that's going to offend some music stores or say, absolutely, we never, we would never do that. Yeah. But certainly the one that I bought these from, which was a well-known chain music store, I think that's yeah what's happened. And we got lucky with that one and unlucky with this one. Yeah. And that's the chance you pay. But, yeah. Unless you know what you're looking for when you go in. Yeah. Um, and or you take somebody with you who knows what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, but then you know, it, I'm a, the sort of thing. I think if I pick a uke up and it's got to have work done to it, exactly, <laughs> yeah. worries me exactly. a bit. Exactly, you yeah. know, because is it going to yeah. happen again? We, or... we bought these blind without. Yeah. They they came from your store, but we bought them blind, so yeah. we didn't try them in the music store. Because again, we like to try things as people are going to get them home. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no point in a manufacturer sending us a ukulele that they've. Perfected yeah, exactly, within it's an inch not of its life, true which they won't have done with any of the other ones that they sell yeah. because they know it's coming for a review. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say epic fail on this one. Epiphone fail. Epiphone fail. Epiphone, I think, kind of successful. Think it's okay. that. Yeah, I think that I think, one's yeah. won me over from when yeah. we first first bought it. Yeah, I would say both very nice looking, just yeah. mm. nicely finished. So, um, that was a long it review. was, wasn't it? But worthwhile. But, uh, yeah, please do like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And we'll see you next time. See ya.